Hello everyone and welcome to this uh, bonus video. Yeah, that's right. It's a little something I decided to do because I realized that last time when we talk about the maps lost to history, I forgot to show a few things related to the old point 0.5 alpha. And also I mentioned several times the so-called press release beta, but never showed it, which seems a little unfair especially since there are a few interesting things about it. So why not show it now? It shouldn't take too long. So anyway, without further ado, let's jump straight into the emulation and look at the stuff I forgot to show you last time. And I mostly forgot because I couldn't remember on time how to access some of the additional levels in the 0.5 alpha. One of the ways is to use this run command, like for example doom run 10, which will take you to E1 M10 of this alpha. However, it turned out there is also an easier way from inside the game itself. Let me show you. So we start the game, uh, let's say we choose ultra violence. So when you open the menu, you can use the number keys from 1 to 9. And this is something we already did the previous time. But what if we want to go above 9? Well, it turned out to be pretty simple. We just open the menu and then press the plus sign. It will take us one level further, whereas the minus sign will take us one level prior. So I press plus and we find ourselves in some early version of E1M3 toxin refinery and this toxic pool is not properly secured. Ooh, OSHA is not going to approve this. This is the final area although it's pretty unfinished. Uh, As you can see the whole exit room is missing and oh but the secret is here but it's quite unfinished <laughs> as you can see. Can I open this? Oh, am I stuck? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I got stuck. So I'll just go back and then... Yeah. So the rest of the level is... Ooh, a door texture we haven't seen before. Weird. It's pretty similar to the final, although this window here is hidden behind a wall for some reason and the supercharge is this strange flask like thing again. Here we have this window thingy, it opens and shows an empty room and some glitch textures which display something like the Tutti Frutti glitch which I demonstrated in another video. Now here is a completely different room with a bridge over slime and some additional rooms, but the whole outdoor area with the slime pits is missing. Must have been added later on. Another map is, ooh, another iteration of E2M7 spawning vats with some textures we haven't seen before. This triangle thing doesn't exist in the finished game. And look, Doom guy is still playing cards with his friends. Ooh. You must really enjoy these games. So the map is pretty close to its final state. Oh, we see this door here again, but I can't open it for some reason. These hallways are pretty much what we expect to see. Yeah, it's mostly finished, though this is still an indoor area and not outdoors. Ooh, now this is interesting. It's an early version of E1M8, the Phobos Anomaly. This one is cool because it's quite different. Well, the second part is quite different. So normally there would be a long corridor here leading to the pentagram room. But instead we get this weird blue portal. Actually, I think this was supposed to be the actual gateway to hell. And beyond it is some hellish landscape with some pinkies and the two barons, which are known as the Bruiser Brothers. 
And this portal effect looks pretty neat. Well, for a 1993 game, this looked pretty nice, even though it's not really a portal, but just an arrangement of textures. These rooms here are just some really long and dark corridors. I'm not sure there was something interesting in here, and besides I can barely see anything. It's really dark in here. And kind of spooky with these pinkies emerging from the gloom. Yeah, does it lead anywhere? I don't know. Ooh, shooting this illuminates slightly, but very slightly. So it's not much help. Oh, it just loops back to this room. Yeah, not surprising. Then the next map is... Uh, oh, that's actually the last one of the 0.5 Alpha. It's an early version of E2M4 Demos Lab. Here you can see some clips, an elevator, and if we are able to get on top, we should be able to see one of the treasure items as described in the Doom Bible. Yeah, that's an unholy Bible, by the way. <laughs> And that's some kind of med kit. Uh, going in this direction, you here you'll notice a difference. There is a bridge coming out of the slime here. In the final game, there is no bridge, so you can often take some damage while going through here. This is mostly the same, except the crusher doesn't work. It doesn't crush yet. Mm, bad crusher. And if we go a little further, we can see some very familiar rooms, although they don't seem as demonic as they do in the final game. It's like the demons haven't had the time to fully corrupt this place yet. So it still looks like a normal facility of sorts. Yeah, this is supposed to be green marble. Here are some stairs, and this area is quite unfinished and the exit so yeah that's the stuff i missed in this alpha it's not much but still interesting to see and now we can finally take a look at the so-called press release beta so as its name suggests the press release beta is mainly intended to be a short demonstration distributed to some computer and gaming related publications I actually remember seeing an article about Doom in some computer magazine many, many years ago. But sadly, I don't really remember anything about this article. I only remember there were some screenshots from episode 3, judging by the red sky visible in them. There was a screenshot showing the BFG firing, and maybe there was a screenshot of the Spider Mastermind or something like that but I can't really remember anything from the actual text of the article. Anyway, this beta was released in October 93, just two months before the official final release of Doom. And even though we're so close to the actual official release, this beta still doesn't have any sound or music. I guess they were put into the game very, <laughs> very late. In fact, if you've seen the video of Visit to It software in which they show the game, it's a build which is slightly newer than this beta, and it has sound, but it uses sounds from Wolf 3D, <laughs> so they really weren't quite ready with this yet. So let's take a quick look. Uh, the iWAD is almost 5.5 megabytes in size. Ooh, it's getting bigger and bigger. And you can also see something called fake dead date. It's a small program that you need to run this beta because it's uh, programmed in such a way that it cannot be run after a certain date. Yeah, it was like time locked in a way. So what this little program does is that it uh, deceives the game that it's still October 1993, <laughs> allowing it to run. Yeah, weird, I know. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look 
And again, the game will be giving us the silent treatment. So it immediately starts with E1, M2 and it looks almost finished. It's like 95% finished or something like that. And the enemies work, you know, you can shoot them, they shoot you back. It's almost like a fully functional game at this point. Now something you may notice is the small number 3 next to Doom Guy's face. That's the number of his lives. Yeah, this game has extra lives, like Wolf 3D. Weird, I know. Also, notice how the messages are displayed in the HUD instead of at the top of the screen. Ah, uh, the secret here already exists. Uh, oop. Here we can get some health, the backpack, and the skull chest. That's a treasure item. It's like the treasure chest from Wolf 3D, except that it's a skull chest because it's demonic. This button works. We can go to the big outdoor area. Now, as someone who has played the game with the keyboard for a long time, I can tell you that uh, movement feels a bit off. Like, the keyboard controls are working fine, but something about the movement feels different. It's not quite the way it is in the full game. But it's something you can only feel if you really have a lot of experience with keyboarding. Oh, this here is the Unholy Bible, though with uh, some new graphics. It's not a black book with an upside-down cross anymore. A scepter, another treasure item. Oh, actually an evil <laughs> scepter, sorry. Oh, look, we have a score. Oh, can I get a high score? Picking this up gives you health, but also an extra life. Here is a better visible skull chest. Mm -hmm. Some more unholy Bibles. Yeah, now I'm, I'm actually going to give myself some weapons because just having a pistol isn't very fun. Uh, the shotgun works, I think, pretty much identical to the final version. The chain gun, oh, a dagger. The chain gun looks a little different, like its front part is missing, and the firing animation looks a little awkward. Oh, look at it. Oh, yeah, it's kind of ugly, <laughs> but at least it works. Uh, the rest of the level is pretty much the same. We have this corridor, this slime pit. Notice the imp's fireball is different. Ooh, it's more like some kind of energy ball. Also notice that when you take damage from slime, Doom Guy does the ouch face. Ouch, 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 <laughs> and so on. In the final release, the ouch face was actually a little bugged, so the best way to get it was to like take damage and healing simultaneously. I remember one spot where you could easily get an ouch face was in the slime pit in E1M3. If you jumped and landed on top of the med kit and took damage from the slime exactly as you landed on top of the med kit, it was a pretty high chance to get the ouch face. Uh, this area is pretty much the same with some very minimal differences. Oh, did you see that? It's a box of shells, though it looks a little different. Mm. Well, they made it more visible in the final release, which is good. Yeah, this is an elevator again. It seems they really wanted to demonstrate these <laughs> elevators. And this slime area doesn't have a bridge, so I actually have to run through the slime, doing the ouch face all the time. And this takes us to this final area, which is pretty much the same as it is in the finished game. Now, demo map 2. Oh, it's the Unholy Cathedral. And here we're going to see one of the most nightmarish things ever introduced in a Doom game. Lost Souls with a hit scan attack. <laughs> Good thing they removed it. Ah, 
Ouch. And there they are. Do you see them? How they shoot at me from a distance? Oh, and they also leave some kind of corpse in the air. Ouch. And they hurt. Yep, they killed me. Ooh, yeah. I guess I should cheat a little to get rid of these guys. But yeah, they shoot you kind of like a zombie man would. <laughs> It, this makes an already annoying enemy even more annoying. Well, of course, in the final game they don't have a corpse. And here it's floating in this really awkward way. <laughs> uh, the map is pretty much the same, except that the central chamber, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it has a ceiling, it's not an outdoor area anymore. Yeah, it's closed off. Hmm, weird. And also the teleporters don't have a, like the teleporter flash effect. And this seems to be an early version of the partial invisibility. Oh, let's rocket these guys. Notice how the rocket launcher fires slowly and also seems to recoil in this really weird way. I'm kind of glad they made it faster. Does this work? Ooh! It does the color inversion effect of the invulnerability for some reason. <laughs> Weird. Uh, you know, I'll start the level because I don't know if it will wear off or not. One more thing I can show you here is uh, the light amplification goggles. They work a little differently in this version. Oh, some daggers. Another of those lost souls. And the light amp goggles, but this time they make everything green. <laughs> and curiously, some modern source ports do this, as far as I know. <laughs> so it Software had this idea initially, but then they abandoned it in favor of uh, instead of making everything full bright. This is what the visors do in the released version of the game. But here they make everything green. Oh, and also they never run out for some reason. So as long as this level lasts, everything will be green. Now the third map in the beta is E2M2. Hmm, nice. One of my favorites. And we can already see some differences. This door is here. It's supposed to be there. Hmm. Uh, this room here is pretty much finished. The crate maze is also pretty much finished. Ooh, it even shows what weapons you have uh, on the status bar when you open the auto map. This is pretty cool actually. They probably should have kept it. Anyway, some more daggers. Here we see a bit of an awkward transition between the two floor textures. They fixed it in the final release, I think. Let's try the plasma gun. It looks a little different and it shoots green and red blobs. <laughs> but in terms of damage and speed, it's pretty much the final plasma gun. They just made some cosmetic changes to it. Now you may remember this from one of my previous videos, the switch up there, which opens this door. Because back then it wasn't a blue key door. And this switch actually made it into the final game, but it can only be seen in version 1.1. Because patch 1.2 made a lot of changes to many of the levels in Doom, and one of these changes was the removal of this switch and the transformation of this door here into a blue key door. This area is textured a bit differently. Yeah, it looks a bit more demonic now. Whereas in the final game it's uh, more like a tech base. But yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Except with treasures instead of some other... The crushers are here. And they work, although they often slow down. I think this one slows down be because of the med kit. It's not supposed to do that, but it does it. So this one is pretty slow as well. Up, 
I got crushed. <laughs> ah, you can't beat no clip. Okay, and this is again pretty much the same. They just uh, adjusted the geometry a little. Here's the switch, and it opens the door, revealing the red key. But hey, we can't test this beta without showing <laughs> one of the funniest things about it. And I actually made a reference to it in the video thumbnail. Can you guess what it is? Yeah, it's the BFG. The original BFG had a somewhat different effect from the final version. And from what I've heard, Romero disliked it because it reminded him of Christmas. <laughs> Which is why I put that Christmas tree in the thumbnail. So, what does a Christmas gun look like? Well, let's test it. Ooh! <laughs> Jingle bells, you demonic bastards! <laughs> well, it really kind of looks like Christmas or fireworks. Also, keep your eye on the ammunition counter. Notice how it decreases while the gun shoots. Do you see it? It decreases gradually, not instantly, the way it does in the full game. <laughs> Let's try it on these pinkies. Jingle bells! And you're dead. Now let's try it on these nasty lost souls. Jingle bells to you too! Ho ho ho! It works very nicely. In terms of damage, I think each of the blobs it shoots uh, probably does the same damage as the regular plasma gun. So it's basically a plasma gun that shoots a lot very quickly. Oh, this room is a little different. Also notice auto-aim doesn't work, so I have to actually go down to shoot these guys <laughs> with my Christmas gun. <laughs> Whee! And this is some awkward glitch texture. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, this looks so weird. Yeah, anyway. Now, before we end this video, uh, <laughs> this doesn't open. I'm stuck again. Before we end this video, there is one more thing I can show you. Wait, I just need to shoot one more time. <laughs> Yay! There we go. Now something interesting happens when we use the level exit. Well, the game will crash, but the error message it gives when it crashes reveals something interesting about this beta. Uh, wait, it worked the previous time. <laughs> ah, it worked. So here's the curious thing. E2M6 not found. Weird. Why would E3M5 try to take us to E2M6? Unless, of course, it's E2M5 in this version. To confirm our suspicions, we'll go back to this place. Now, very qu quickly run to the exit and see what error message we're going to get there. Almost there. And when we use the exit, curious, E3M3 not found. So it's like this map is E3M2. What's going on here? <laughs> well, if you're familiar with the Doom Bible, you should already know what's going on. And if you're not, I'll tell you now. You see, in the Doom Bible, the sequence uh, of the Doom story was a little bit different from what it is nowadays. So Doom guy was initially supposed to go through the UAC base, that would be episode one. Then he would go to hell and go through the hell levels. That would have been episode two. And finally return to a UAC base, which has been considerably corrupted by the demonic influence. And that would have been episode three. At some point, however, before the game was released, so in the distance of these two months between October and December, episodes 2 and 3 switched their places. And so the corrupted UAC base episode became episode 2, The Shores of Hell. 
and the hellish episode became episode 3, Inferno. But in this beta, they were still following the original sequence. And that's why Containment Area is treated as an episode 3 map, and Unholy Cathedral is an episode 2 map. By the way, this is a structure we can see in Doom 3 as well. You know, first there's the UAC base, then you go to the Hell level to get the Soul Cube, and once you return from there, you're back in the USC base, but it's becoming increasingly, increasingly corrupted and more dangerous. Yeah, so that was one final bit of trivia that we could find out about this beta. So, yeah, I guess that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this little addition to the previous video. I tried to make it short. As for the next episode, I'm actually thinking of doing something a little more <laughs> weird. I won't tell you what it is yet, but I can tell you that I was originally planning to do it for <laughs> April 1st, you know, April Fools. But I couldn't because there was too much other stuff going on at the time and I didn't have the time or the mood to do it. But maybe I'll do it now. So keep your eyes open and goodbye until next time folks, until next time.